So, I hear we're into some of the same stuff. You're about to join John and Eric as we explore said stuff. Really bad movies. Sega Genesis. Sports and girls. The interesting aspects of pop culture. And we'll answer listeners' mail because you have so much to say. You are listening to a sophisticated conversation. Greetings and welcome to the fourth episode of Podcast Four. Podcast Revolution. Four. I'm your host John, and with me is Eric Mitch Monster Mitchell. Number Eric, four. how you doing tonight? I'm doing great. I'm doing very good. We have two fantastic special guests here. Well, one of them is a guest. One of them is more regular. Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, the uh, the much touted Frenchy Michael Bordelais is here. Mike, how you doing tonight? Doing great, Johnny. How we doing today? I'm uh, doing pretty well. And uh, to your right is Michael Miller. What's going on? Wearing his uh, green, uh, what, what shirt is that? State Radio. State Radio. Ooh, excellent band. Excellent band. Don't you have a guitar signed by them? Yes, I do. Well, he does. So if you want to call in and win it, uh, feel free to give us a call. All right. Uh, <laughs> Eric. Yes. Uh, what have you been up to since our last podcast? Well, let's see. Our podcast ended at about 11.30 last night or something. So Sounds I went home, right, yeah. slept, went to work, and then came straight here and ate your pretzels in your freezer. So Sounds exactly like what Trevor does every day, except, you know, you added pretzels. I also clowned on some women. Too. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yes. And um, so we have our intern, Mike Bordelay, here. So, uh, so we want to start this episode with a special announcement by Mike Bordelais. But before we get to that, if you want to remember, if you want to get in touch with us, please send an email to johnnytheockey at gmail.com, J-O-N-N-Y-T-Hockey at gmail.com. Eric, how can we reach you? smc at gmail.com. John's been getting all the emails. What the hell? Yeah, people like me. No. I'm the first voice they hear on the show, so they think... I'm, I'm the one to go to. They, That's they don't, they don't trust you. See, I thought like all the guys would go to you and all the women would come to my email, but they haven't. So my email is much better. So please send yours to me instead of John. Speaking of things being better, uh, Frenchie, why don't, you, why don't we get to your announcement? Yeah, what, what's the big announcement, Mike, between you and a certain hockey player in Toronto? Hey, shut up. Let him talk. All right, yeah. Let me finish, please. Okay. okay. Well, I have personally called out Phil Kessel on many occasions. Now I am publicly doing it. Phil Kessel, if you are out there, I will challenge you to an ice hockey fight because I feel like you are the weakest NHL player and I just feel like I would knock you out. Why do you want to fight Phil Kessel? Well, you left Boston on bad terms. He had one good year and just thinks because of one good year he can have $5 million. So you think because of that he deserves to be pummeled by you? Yeah, because look Which what he happened. wouldn't be. Yeah, look but... I disagree. I think Phil Castle would absolutely kill you, actually. All right, Mike well, Miller, can you see Frenchie beating up any NHL player? To be honest, I have no idea. Or AHL, for that matter. Or, like, 12-year-old kids hockey, <laughs> well, for that matter. Well, to be fair, <laughs> AHL has all the tougher guys. So so you're saying you, you couldn't beat up anybody in the AHL? No, I definitely could. No, you couldn't. I definitely could. I'm, no. sa- I'm saying you can't. Well, I think you're wrong. Okay. And well, on that note, I am publicly calling you out, Phil Kessel, so please respond. The women on the USA women's hockey team would kick your ass. Not that they wouldn't kick mine either, because they would. I, but Yeah, they have more facial hair than we do. <laughs> <laughs> that is just, just had to put it out there. <laughs> I feel like every episode I have had some group of women last time it was what the horse. horses women who like horses i think they're ridiculous and uh now women hockey players you know i just think they're a little uh maybe that's why well, you most of them the it, they're not interested in you anyways eric that's a very good drift. point yeah that, that's, that's, that's why not getting I, I, if you if you watch them the writing's kind of on the walls so. right yeah no i think you're right so so anyways if you did fight phil kessel uh, where where would the venue be? I mean, I was hoping where he used to play, down at good old TD Bank Garden. So you think, like, that we could just fill up the arena with, like, tons of screaming fans, no hockey game, just Phil Castle comes out in uniform and in gear, and then you come out. 
Yeah, it could you be. You guys like just a, start fighting. It could be a fundraiser and, and or think, something. You we think could raise money. You think you'd even have a chance to fight him? Yeah, I do. You you, you think his your balance is better than his on the ice? I'm not saying my balance. He, he could is... just touch you and you'd fly over. Nah, no way. Borlet, we're talking about. I have power in my fist. We are talking about a professional athlete that, for a living, eats, sleeps, and lives working out hockey in good working shape. Working out. Look at the guy. He's four foot two. <laughs> I think he's a little taller than that. <laughs> he has no upper body strength whatsoever. Phil Kessel, I bet he's like six he, two. He six gets knocked no, gets knocked around oh. every time he touches the puck. Let's look that up. How what is Phil Kessel's height and weight? Let's let's find that out. While we're I'm doing gonna, that, I'm gonna Bordelay, guess five eleven right now. Bordelay, what is your height? Oh, My 5'11". height is you said, 5'11". You said four two a minute ago. So yeah, now you're changing it to five eleven. Obviously he's taller than four two. That's okay. an exaggeration. But I am 5'11", 205 pounds of solid, pure muscle. <laughs> <laughs> you sure about that? He is 5'11". He is 5'11". I think 11. you've been stalking <laughs> Phil. No, I'm 5'11". See, I got the I got the weight advantage right there, 25 pounds. <laughs> yeah, but he has, like, the agility of the professional athlete. And, like, advantage. muscle. He has no upper body strength. Look at the guy. He gets thrown <laughs> around like a rag doll. He doesn't back check. He shows in his personality... Well, that he, he could not win a fight. He's comparatively weaker to other NHL players, <laughs> but you're not in that category. No, I'm not. And you never will be. That's fine. I'm not <laughs> trying to be. I think with the mustache, he gets a few added points, though. Like Phil Kessel versus Mike Cordelay with Phil, the mustache. And, and he also thinks he could beat up Sidney Crosby. Yeah, right. No, I, we're not bringing in Sidney. Just because I hate him doesn't mean I could beat him up. Okay. Just uh, We're not even going to go there. Sid, enjoy golfing. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone's enjoying golfing right now since the season's over. Well, he's been golfing for two months, so whatever. Just like the Bruins. Yeah. Why would you, why would you bring that up? <laughs> I was I was tormented. I was at Game 7. All right, Frenchie, this isn't a show about you. Anyways. Yeah, you're uh, the intern, Mike. Jeez Christ. Don't make us some crumpets. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so, after this commercial, we'll get into an in-depth interview with Mike Miller, the man himself. Okay. Netflix. Two movies. Eight ninety nine a month. What else could go wrong? Use it. <laughs> if you don't use it, you won't lose it, so it's okay. <laughs> Check it out on Xbox Live. And now on Wii. And on your computer. Wherever, really. It doesn't really matter. Coming soon to Android phones and iPhones. That's a true story. Really? Yes. And we are back. And again, we... We do have a special guest, Mr. Michael Miller. Yes, yes. Does anyone ever call you Michael? Um, at work sometimes, but I have kind of put a stop to that. How, how do you put a stop to that? By telling them to, to call me Mike, really. Oh, I thought there'd be something more exciting. <laughs> no, that. no. Like, you, you never have to throw down? <laughs> no, if I did, I'd probably get fired. Oh. Where do you work, anyways? I work for UMass, actually, in the Molecular Diagnostics Laboratory. You sound important. Um, yeah, I guess you could say that. Do you guys, um, develop things like, you know, you know the movie 28 Days Later, where there's this, mm-hmm. like, a science lab and monkeys, like, wanting to, like, kill people with red eyes and stuff? Um, do you guys do that? No, unfortunately. Can you give me a bullet if I make you mad? No, I can't. We don't deal with that. How no. about swine flu? Swine flu, maybe, yeah. So you're telling me there's just a lab with a bunch of horrifically infectious diseases just chilling out just just hanging out in a lab um in a way kind of yeah because we take the patient samples and we treat we test them for these diseases. stool samples no thankfully just blood oh. and um throat swabs see that kind of freaks me out because what if you know some crazy guy like drove his car into the laboratory and blew it up all of a sudden we'd have all these infectious diseases and then we'd all have rage and We'd all start killing each other <laughs> and taking over the whole country. That's what I'm afraid of. What is the possibility of that happening? Is that a rational fear? Uh, with our lab, no, not really. So there, so no one could like drop a plane into a lab and have infectious diseases go all over the place. Well, scientifically, I guess it depends on if it's a respiratory um, disease. So if it can be transmitted through the air, then that's that that is possible. But if it's bloodborne. Then not really. So are you actually benefiting society, or are you just en- enjoying your self-indulgent needs to look at molecular uh, organisms? I guess a little bit of both. You're a selfish man. 
I do what I can. Now, Mike, have you ever seen the movie I Am Legend? Yes, I have. What? The movie was terrible. It was okay. We'll the third back. act was terrible. Yeah. yeah. But what is the possibility that we could have a lab like that and all turn into these vampire thingies? Now, I mean, you have a lab with a bunch of infectious diseases, so I'm assuming there's like a crazy vampire zombie disease in there somewhere, <laughs> right? Um, if somehow a, um, the HIV and, I don't know, hepatitis B and C could do that, then... What about syphilis? Syphilis we do not handle now. What about frontal lobotomies? Interestingly enough, but no. Now, can diseases evolve like a Pokemon? <laughs> like, can <laughs> it's, they gain levels? Can they, they start game? at, like, level whatever and then evolve into another disease and become a more <laughs> stronger Pokemon? Well, I mean, I guess you could just look at MRSA. I mean, it started off as as one um, one bacterium, and then it gained resistance to um, to different uh, med- medications, different mm. antibiotics. So you're trying to tell me that MRSA is kind of like the EV of diseases, where it can take either the lightning stone, the fire stone, or the water stone, well, and evolve in many different it, directions. Well, or, or are you saying it's like the Zdeno Charizard of hockey? <laughs> um well i mean all, um, i think all bacteria can can really do that i mean it's just an example of MRSA. i mean because ba- bacteria gain resistance all the time what's to... the cutest bacteria the cutest oh is there one uh, with like polka dots and it's bedazzled is there one that sparkles i have not seen any of that actually well Actually, E. coli is pretty cool looking. Does E. coli Ooh, uh, get it on? What? I'm assuming <laughs> that's a no. Um, sure, yeah. So why is E. coli so cool looking? Because on this one type of plate, um, an agar plate, which has nutrients that allow for different bacteria to grow on, it actually has a green sheen to it that's, that's, pr- that's shiny. And it's really cool. So why is swine flu so in this season? I have no idea. What disease will be in style next season? I haven't read in vogue lately, but um, let's see. Uh, Let me stop you for a second. Do you believe, are you for or against vaccines? I am for vaccines. Well, Eric here was telling me he's against them completely. Okay. Well, I'm not against them 100% completely. And our, Frenchie just our uh, intern, up the studio. Our intern, wow. our intern just um, <laughs> released the beast. Well, Thank you're you. fired. Oh, well, thanks, intern Bordelay. You guys are very welcome. No, well, the thing with vaccines is well, I hear there's there's a lot of news. Frenchie, we're trying to have an adult discussion. Stop wafting. I mean, like, like vaccines to, like, um, tetanus, I am for. But vaccines to... <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> the flu, I am not for at all because it's really a waste. Because with influenza, there's so many different subtypes that when you get a vaccine, it's not to stop uh, or to help you against all these uh, different types of influenza. What happens is that statisticians um, equate out as to um, what they think the most prominent flu will be. But really, there's so many t- so many other types out there that it's really a crapshoot. So say that if they do, if they use statistics and determine that type A is going to be the most prominent, and they give you the vaccine for that one, but then there's fl- there's flu B over here just chilling. And it's like, oh hey, you don't have me um, in your in your sights. So you know what? Screw you. Ha, huh, have flu. I hate that flu B. So how how should you know? In your opinion, as someone who works with um, bacteria and crazy, infectious, insane diseases all day. Um, I mean, what's, what's the best way? Should we just not get any vaccines and just get used to it and get sick a lot and then overcome it? Or what, what do you think is the best way? Uh, that's what I typically do. If I get sick, I don't, I try not to take any medications unless if it's like life threatening because your immune system requires, um, interaction with different bacteria and viruses in order for yourself to gain natural resistance. Mm. So, uh, so if you got taken hostage by a terrorist organization, would they be able to harness your abil- your mind abilities to launch a biological or chemical attack? No, because I don't have a PhD or anything like that. I mean, I would be more of a threat to them 
or to anyone really if I knew more um, in depth about whatever it is that they're doing. Um, like for instance, um, anthrax. What it is, it's the bacterium uh, Bacillus anthracis. And naturally, it's not really that, that harmful. But what they do is that they um, manipulate the bacterium in, um, to give the effects that they want to deliver onto whoever. Kind of like the band Anthrax, they did that as well. Yes, 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 yes. I see. John, you seem very intrigued right now. You, you seem very deep in thought. No, I'm, fr- I'm holding my nose because Frenchie just laid a bomb in here. Yeah, thank <laughs> God. <laughs> what, what do you have to say for yourself, sir? That was awesome. And I'm not sorry. He's not sorry. Well, Mr. Miller, thank you for your bacterium discussion my pleasure anytime um now moving on you know we spoke to we had some guests earlier who didn't do much in their free time so what do you like to do in your free time besides playing with diseases all day in my free time uh let's see i like to um go longboarding um play frisbee and i just started up parkour actually did you really yes i did yeah can you like do flips off of like seesaws and stuff not yet but in a few weeks, I'm going to start training to do flips. Really? Yeah, Interesting. Just, um, I've just been doing conditioning, trying to build up my upper body strength in order to be able to keep myself safe while in the future I do dumb stuff. So when you make your body stronger, do you mm-hmm. think you'll be able to beat up Phil Kessel as well? Uh, I don't know. Um, maybe if we teamed up on him, that we could probably take them down but myself personally i don't think so well maybe you could like dip your hand in a bunch of like bacteria <laughs> kind of like kind of like in rambo 3 i think it was with the street fight in the beginning how they, they like dip their hands in like glass and stuff or just like in hot shots where he dips his hands in like caramel and, and like gummy M&Ms. bears yeah. and stuff yeah exactly or just like roger rabbit when he dips them in the dip oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh roger rabbit reference of the day um yeah, so I recommend you do that and fight Phil Kessel. Well, do. Um, I hear he goes down easy with, uh, with like, um, like yeast infections. Oh, so really? yeah, okay. so you may you may want to try that out on him. <laughs> so the old one testicle Kessel. Yeah, <laughs> the one nut wonder. <laughs> we apologize, Phil. <laughs> not really. What we say do not reflect anything that we feel. <laughs> So what's our uh, our listener mail? Maybe we can have the intern and uh, Mike Miller chime in. Can can we? Oh, that's right. We do have a ver- and an advice question too, oh. which we'll get to right after this. Oh, oh, oh! Easy there, Franco the dog. Oh boy, you, you we're gonna go on vacation pretty soon. Oh boy, we forgot about you. No, don't cry, Franco. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Franco. Wait, we could take him to the kennel. No! He doesn't want to go to the kennel. What? Wait a minute. Did, didn't we hear that ad on Podcast Podcast Revolution? Oh, yeah. For, for uh, Paw to Paw Promise? We did hear Paw to Paw Promise. Now our little uh, furry friend here. Franco the dog, you can stay home. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to go to a kennel. You don't have to get can, kennel cough. You can have a great pet sitter come and watch you. Well, uh, what's that website again? It is paw, P-A-W, 2, T-O, promise, P-R-O-M-I-S-E, dot com. Oh, yeah. Paw to paw promise. Dot com. And we're back. And uh, it appears in that commercial that Eric accidentally said pawtopromise.com. Yeah, it should be pawtopawpromise.com. Right. I mean, we assume most of you would have figured that out, but there's there's some people who aren't so smart out there. So I kind of want to dance after listening to that commercial. It was pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah it was good. All right, so we're going to have our guests come in close and help us with this uh, email that we got. Okay. And it's asking for advice. It's from Marge. I need your advice. Let's say there's an alligator in my apartment. What's the best method for killing the darn thing? Marge. Ooh, wow. That's an interesting one. Killing an alligator. Well, I I don't know about you guys, but uh, I I don't think I'd want to kill it. I think I'd either want to keep it as a pet 
or just or or I'd call animal control to come help out. Yeah, but, I'm pretty sure technically as a pet, it would try to beat your face off. It's possible. Well, she said crocodile, not alligator. I would try to make it like a golf putting thing. Like I'd take some golf balls <laughs> and kind of whack it at its face. Gator and golf. Them. Yeah, it'd be like gator <laughs> golf. That's that's probably what I would Give do. Gator golf. Give it a whack. Gator golf. Throw it right back. Yeah, the, I don't think really he'd throw it right back gator. though. <laughs> he might not. He'd probably eat me actually. Yeah, but killing an alligator. I don't, I don't know. How do we do that, Borley? How would you kill an alligator? The same way that you're gonna kill Phil Kessel. Well, if I actually tried to just walk up to it and start punching an alligator, it might rip my arm limb for limb, rip it right apart. I mean, the They're best way creatures. they are. They could snap right down, right through your arm. The best way would probably get like a tranquilizer gun or something. Probably sedate it, and then work make your way through there. Um, you could put like a big like pantagram in the middle of the room where the alligator is, and do like a seance for Steve Irwin, and have <laughs> him like rise from the grave and like absolutely wrestle the thing and take it out. I yeah. mean, you you could do that. Or you, you know those sticky things they put down for uh, mice? Just get like ten of those and put them down to trap him. You might need a little more than ten for a giant alligator. Well, ten big ones. You could take a box and put a stick on the other end with a string, and then just put <laughs> Borley under the box. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Borley? Is he Frenchy? Frenchy, yeah, same thing. Yeah, he knows who he is. In turn, yeah. I mean, I would try to go with the Ace Ventura when Nature Calls idea when he was in the water, and uh, you know he was wrestling and fighting it. Would you make it say Uncle? Oh, of course. <laughs> you have to. But you don't have the hair. Or won't respect you. I'll get. Or the hair. we can go. Another reference and go Happy Gilmore. You just jump right in after the golf ball and just start hitting the damn thing and drowning it, even though it has lungs and can breathe underwater. But and, and we hope that Marge is asking us this question because, well, we hope she's just asking it out of curiosity. We hope she doesn't actually have an alligator yes. or crocodile in her apartment. Otherwise, it would probably be too late by the time she hears this. Actually, there was once um, on the lake that I live on, there was actually like, there was like Marine Patrol and police like all over the place one summer. It was like a few years ago. I guess some woman had, like, an alligator, like a pet one, and it got pretty big, and she let it into the lake. She's wow. like, what is wrong with people? <laughs> <laughs> they found it, though, which is good. You swim in that lake. It could have eaten you. Yeah. Whatever. No, no, no way. I'm, like, half Australian. I would have took that thing out. It's instincts. <laughs> 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 All right. Well... Okay, then. I don't, yeah. I don't know where to go from there. Oh, I know where to go from there. All right. Clown on her. I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know where to go. Um, the Celtics game tonight. Game four. Celtics are down yes. two to one. Which they pretty. Underway. They pretty much. No, it's not. It starts at nine. I thought it was eight o'clock tonight. <laughs> starts at nine. Eight. Nine. Oh, I don't right. care. I, I don't wrong. care. I don't care. Jeez. But uh, it's funny. After game two, when the series was tied one to one, Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce told the media, or he, he just said it, that this wasn't coming back to L.A., at, citing that the Celtics would win the next three games at home. Didn't happen. Celtics lost. But he was right. It's not coming back to L.A. because the Celtics are going to lose the rest of the games in Boston. <laughs> Ooh. Now, 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 Johnny. I don't think you can be saying that. That's a bold prediction. Mm. Um, first of and all. He made the prediction. I didn't. Uh, first I'm, of I'm all, just validating it for him. Telling him he's right. First of all, if we can get at least more than one player on in one game, we will be all right. I mean, we've been close in all three, in both losses, and only one player has done good in both of those losses. If we can get two people to do good, or even three, all three of the big three, we might yeah, actually start to do doing that something. Being guarded so well against the uh, impenetrable defense. Mike, could you release one of those like Pokemon diseases into the <laughs> locker room of LA? <laughs> we could win that way. <laughs> Would that be possible? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that would be illegal. Oh. And immoral. No. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't care. say that. I mean, it's a Celtics. Dude, it's, can you celebrate it's a Kobe win when it's that tainted? Well, I guess. Win. Dude, it's yeah. Kobe yeah. Bryant. His whole yeah. life is tainted. That's Are true. you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Eagle, Colorado, anybody? I mean, come on. I have a question, though, for, the, for us. Do we think that? But an over on <laughs> a great way to put it. <laughs> over under for Kobe Bryant scoring forty points tonight. Oh, over! I think he's gonna absolutely go nuts tonight. Absolutely. I don't think he even needs to, but I'm sure. I bet he will. What do you think, Miller? I would say that would be accurate. He would be the over. 
just knowing how he is and how he can be in the playoffs when when he's just on fire, I ruined that for the passing. Hmm. See, I think that all three of you are wrong. Tonight, Kobe Bryant will score only 35 points, which is still a great game, don't get me wrong. But the Celtics will win tonight. Wait, Frenchie, how many points did your team score in your game yesterday in the second half? All right. We're not talking about last night. Yeah, why don't you give us a little recap of your basketball game? Oh, God. All right, guys. Well, the score, the final score was 72 to 42. We lost by 30. But the score at halftime was 33 to 30. So you scored nine points in the second half, and uh, the other team scored 40. You scored 12. Oh, I'm sorry. You got 12 points in the second half. What did the other team get, like 42 or something? Uh, 39. Either way, it's pretty embarrassing. Yeah, it was it was pretty bad. I sat the whole the, basically the whole second half. I got very frustrated and very sick to my stomach. Did you bang your head against the wall? I uh, I've I did seen not. Him, I've seen him do that in hockey. He has seen it on multiple occasions. <laughs> but no, I did not. I re- I kept my cool. I just sat on the bench and yelled at the ref, even though it wasn't his fault. We just we had. <laughs> Well, we're going to have to edit that. Well, out. thanks, Bordelay. Now we got to edit for the first time. <laughs> We've kept it a nice family podcast. I'm but very you gotta go sorry, around. Listeners. You want to say some other things, too, Bordelay? You know, just to make it annoying so we can beat some more you things. You want to try to say anything as bad as what Kevin said the other day? Yeah. <laughs> well, see, I didn't know what Kevin said. I'm not. Well, you're a pretty terrible sure. intern. Kevin said a semi racist type of comment. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't no. He wasn't, he wasn't meaning well, it, we don't but. Need to bring it was back very. Up. It wasn't politically correct. I guess that would be the. Right yeah. term. I said I slipped one word that can easily be beeped out, and no one will even know. And it's not even that bad of a word anymore. It's said on TV shows all over. This is true. Always said in Philadelphia. Case in point. This is true. You're allowed to say that on television? Yep. Yep. Family after guy, after a certain guy? time, I think. Probably after eleven. I South assume. Park. Yeah, well, no, I'm not sure what time yeah. Sunny was on. Why is like swearing and on TV such a big deal? Like everyone, like when they find out, they're like. Oh my god, did you hear what he said? Yeah, I mean, we, we heard our first swear, swear when we were like 12. Yeah. Well, some people learn it younger than that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when you see little kids at the park, you're like dropping F-bombs left and right. Yeah, it's, seriously. It's, it's scary. But, but right now, we're all young adults. When, we have, when we're older and we have our own kids, well, I think we might feel a little differently. Mm. Screw that, I'm not having kids. <laughs> 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 Actually, you like my explain to you my idea to have like twelve sons. Like, if we could, remember we, we yeah, got, you want to abort all your kids who are going to be girls. Is that what you said? No, I don't want to abort them. What I said was you want to sell them. no, no, <laughs> that's not what I said. That's a good idea, but that's not what I said. Um, <laughs> Ch- write that down. Yeah, exactly. Um, Chap said the other night that there that some scientists are almost close that you could they could make like decide the sex of a child. Like, while it's, you know... In, in that's the, correct. Right. And I said, oh, that's a great idea. I'd have, like, 13 boys and make them all nasty athletes and then just bank on the fact that hopefully that one of them will make it pro. And then I'll... Yeah. That's my retirement. And then as you're growing up, you can do seven on seven. Yeah. I mean, that'd be sick. Or like, whatever sport you want to do. I mean... You well, could, what if you they could... grow up hating you? Because if you, you just push them too hard. I don't care. I can't... <laughs> no, then they won't make <laughs> any money. Well, in that case, they can just move out. I mean, it's... Yeah, the... They have to give me money. I'm, I'd be the dad for god's sake yeah Dude, one day life. so they could divorce themselves from you look at gary coleman Ooh. rest in peace well one day they will forgive you and know that they only re- reached the pro level because you pushed them so hard at Dude, such a young age. if i like blow all my money on like building ridiculous sporting complexes in my yard so they become <laughs> pros they better pay me back in the future <laughs> So that's my, yeah, and I like, if you had 10 sons, you could have, or no, 11, I'm sorry, you could do six on six. <laughs> oh, yeah, including yourself, yes. Yeah, that'd yeah. be pretty sweet. And that works for every sport. Right. So, I think, I think really the world is screwed if that happens, because obviously everyone's going to want a boy and not a girl. <laughs> 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 yeah. Think about it, why would you want it? <laughs> Speaking from a dad's, like, perspective of a not that i am a dad but why would you want a daughter instead of a son so the, so like, the like woman would have no say in anything pretty i mean <laughs> would the world really be that bad if we just kind of all became like, like think about it like the, it would be awesome we'd have like sports would be awesome right? I, I bet all, if, if it was all guys i bet they'd grow up hating themselves because they'd have no girls to go with 
that they, you'd be creating a, a, a completely homosexual world. Not that there's anything wrong with like oh, I mean, now, but completely homosexual is uh, that would be absurd. I don't know. I think it'd be pretty sweet. There wouldn't be any like. I mean, obviously, like it would suck that we wouldn't have dinner ready on time. But like, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I don't know. I, I think it's. I think it'd be a great idea. I mean sports would be fun it would be a good time everyone would have some fun i mean how many times have you been with a group of guys and it's like everyone's having fun you're enjoying life like ah, da, da, da. it's like oh my girlfriend or oh my wife or oh like whatever you know it, well fortunately for the first time we have a woman in the studio who can chime in yeah she can you. chime come in yes you gotta over. chime in come on come on, come on down. down come on yes yes all right no that, how do you feel about you Eric's feel? proposal? If if you had the choice to ha- choose the gender of your child, would you only have male children? Could you see yourself with 11 male children? No. No. Why not? Because, I don't know. Because what? It'd be more fun? We... <laughs> no. It wouldn't girls be more, more fun. fun. Why are girls more fun? I don't know. I think it, it sucks, because the other thing, too, is if you have a daughter, like, I'm just calling it right now. If I have a daughter, I'm, I'm like, whoever she has as a boyfriend, it's going to... You feel bad for her. I feel bad you're gonna for stand him. At home yeah. polishing, you're going to stand at home polishing your guns when he walks Pretty in. Pretty much. Then you have a son. You're like, and so you're... you'll be home by 930, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much what I'll be doing, like sitting out on a porch. Yeah. That's pr- that's pretty much what I would be doing. So, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't have to worry about that. So you'd just be sitting on the porch in a rocking chair with a shotgun like a banjo or something like that? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Did you hear the story in the news the other day? I, I know you did, Eric. What? About the guy who, um, his daughter is 17, and he got, uh, she got nude pictures on her phone from a 23-year-old, and uh, a, a male. And the guy came over to the house, the dad invited him over, and the dad tied him up and tased him. Well, while he was t- while he was in the chair. Don't chase me, bro. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure that's what he was saying <laughs> as, as he was on the ground convulsing. And the, then the dad called the police on the son. And the police came over and saw the son tied up. And the dad got arrested. No surprise. Yeah. Well, John, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If the world was all men, that wouldn't have happened. At least not as much. That's See, you don't have anything to say. You guys have a that. true point there. Yeah, thank no you. No matter how wrong it is. Thank you, Frenchie. But he does have a true point there. Plus, we wouldn't have. Well, men could still send other men pictures of their genitalia. Yeah. yeah. And a very protective father could well, do the at least, same thing. At least we wouldn't have to look at Sarah Jessica Parker anymore. Yeah, she looks like a foot. <laughs> she looks like a horse, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you think she looks like a foot? Yeah, I think her face is kind of very foot like. It's not, it's not there. Yeah, what, what do you think, Miller? What do you what do you think of Sergeant Parker? I have to agree. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, on the record, I'm just kidding about all those points. But Not the whole thing right. about me having a shotgun being on a porch, that's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> or, I, I hope I, ho- I hope you try to get a son and end up with eleven daughters. I'm sure I will. Like I'm sure God's <laughs> listening to this podcast right now and he's like he's like this kid sucks. I'm giving him like thirty hundred like Million thousand bajillion aisle a lot. Oh god, <laughs> aisle eighteen. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> yeah. That's gonna be the worst. Like knowing my luck, not only am I gonna have like ten daughters, like my wife or something will be like on vacation or with something. her mom or something, and I'll be left at home, and the daughter will probably be like thirteen, and it'll be like that first time that it will be like one. oh crap <laughs> what oh. 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 and then you'll have to go to her ballet shows your wife's gonna get her yeah you're, you're probably gonna have like 30 hundred sons i'll be nasty at hockey you'll be like yeah i was at my kid's hockey game he like beat the crap out of this other kid it was sick and then i'll be like oh yeah well i saw like 30 pas <laughs> <laughs> My kid's really good at synchronized swimming. I mean, I guess that's better. At least if you had a million daughters, that's better than having a million sons that are into, like, ballet and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a million daughters, it would just be a drama fest. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I, if I could deal with that. I feel like I would just quit. Like, it's almost like, no, in sports, <laughs> like, you, like, you raise your jersey to the rafters. It's like, just raise, like, 
I would just raise something in my house to the roof. Just be like, yeah, I retired. Like, I'm I, done. I could see you getting a totally emo kid that doesn't relate to you at all. Why do you say that? Because I think you'd be a terrible father. I mean, oh, thanks, John. <laughs> thanks. What, you mean just like the uh, son in Wedding Crashers? I, another movie I don't care for that everybody likes. Why Dude. Why would you say that about that great movie? It's 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 funny movie. I, I love Vince Vaughn. I love Owen Wilson. I just can't get into the movie. Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken's <laughs> awesome, too. I love the cast. I just can't get into the movie. John, I would be the best dad ever. I don't know what you're talking about. Why, well, why do you think that? His know. son would kick your son's ass. That's why I think that. <laughs> He'd be like 13 on one. My daughter would kick his son's ass. Ooh. <laughs> well, at least my, I would teach my son the ways of not liking horse rides in Boston, unlike you, John. I would teach my son to go to Fenway Park to go to the Red Sox game, not to sell the tickets, and go for a horsey ride in Boston like you would. So. Or to go to a hockey game and watch people beat the crap out of each other. That's what me and my daughter would be doing. No, you'd be on the horse. She'd be ride. one of those butch female yeah. no, hockey she, players. She would be at the game. You would be on the horsey ride. <laughs> <laughs> you already <laughs> said you would sell your tickets in a for a Red Sox episode. team. For a Red Sox team. Let's get this clear. Have fun. Well, you know what? My son will clown on your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to dignify that with a response. <laughs> then you have instilled no moral values in your son, nor have I in my daughter. I never said I would. Then you're a terrible father. No. Just I would, as I said. No. I'm not. You will be the worst father in the history of fathers. I you're just, just going to whip your son and make him into either the human centipede or into <laughs> an athlete, Neither, both of which he'll fail at. I wouldn't fail at the human side. <laughs> Come on. Would you, would you put your son in the front or in the middle? Mm, I'd put your daughter in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you're going to be a great father. Oh, I'm going to be sick. When we actually have kids and they go back in time and listen to this podcast, they're going to be disgusted in us. No, I mean, they'll be like, wow, Eric's the man. Your dad rules. And be like, yeah, all right, my dad, he's out riding horses in Boston. <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah, touche. Speaking of movies, I'm just curious. What do you guys think of the movie The Room? Oh. Oh, we reviewed <laughs> that week one, and we loved it. You'll have to Ab- listen to that. Go back to episode one, folks. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. It's good you brought that up, because that movie is so good, it deserves a second, not like a review, but just go see it. That was fun. Oh, yeah. Funny, fun movie. Excellent times. Actually, I'm going to look up when Tommy Wiseau is going to be in town. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes, Tommy Wiseau is coming to Boston. We'll, that's right. We'll get to that after the break. You know, it's a great service that has been used a lot lately by me and the guys I work with. What? Netflix. Oh, really? What is Netflix? It's crazy. It's this, this uh, company in which you can rent movies from either on an Xbox, on your computer, and apparently, on, it's going to be coming soon to the iPod and also to the Android. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. How do they do that? I have no idea. What's the price? Eight ninety nine <laughs> for one month. Oh, wow. And that's a free trial. Where can I find an ad for it to click to get the free trial? You can find an ad for this if you go to podpodcastrevolution.mypodcast.com. <laughs> forward slash index dot html oh let me check that oh wait no it's podcast podcast revolution dot uh, my podcast dot com f- slash index dot html <laughs> that's where it is okay awesome it's right there at the very top in the black and red and it's a link so you can click on it and go and look at it. That's great. Me and my 12 I'm se- a man! <laughs> and we're back. Wasn't that a great commercial for Netflix, our amazing sponsor? At the top of all our banner ads. <laughs> Except the time you actually go to the site and it's going to be something else. But if you want to find Netflix, Eric, how would they get to Netflix? You can go to podcast, podcast. No, if, they, if it's not on our site. Oh, isn't it just like Netflix.com? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. You can go there. <laughs> but you should go to our site instead. Yeah, our site's better. It looks like it's from 1996. <laughs> <laughs> Probably is. 
All right, so uh, we're close to that point we'll, where we end the show. So we'd like to thank our guests for coming, first of all. Thank and you, thank uh, you. It's been fun. while they're here, we'd like to ask for recommendations. Uh, we'll get you in on this segment. Right. So, uh, Mike, what do you recommend for a movie? Lately, I saw Drag Me to Hell. I thought it was pretty crazy. Who's in this movie? Anybody we'd know? Uh, Justin Long. He was. Oh, I remember him. He's he in, in Zack and Miri Make a Porno. And also in Accepted. Oh, yes, that's true. So, good movie? You recommend it, obviously. I'd say so, yeah. What's it about? It's a horror movie in which this woman who works for a bank, she de denies this old uh, gypsy woman um, an extension on a loan for her house or something, and she gets cursed. And so the movie is about the progression of this curse on her, and it's uh, pretty crazy. I don't want to give too much away. I feel pretty cursed right now since uh, I'm being wafted towards... Yeah, Frenchie, keep laughing. Go ahead. Laugh, laugh. Go ahead. Yeah, he, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> and Frenchie farted again. He's the worst intern ever. Why did we... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the show is so much more productive when our intern's not here. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Eric, what, what movie do you recommend this week? I am going to recommend The Sandlot. It's Wait, a good which movie. One? Oh, <laughs> Which one do you think, John? Yeah, I'm going to recommend Sandlot 2. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, two too yeah, <laughs> you know, the, the straight-to-DVD one. Um, no, I'm going to recommend Sandlot. Good movie. One of my favorites from when I was a kid. Um, yeah, go see it. I thought they remade it. Are they in the process of remaking it? Are they really? That's what I heard. That's, Why do they keep I, remaking... I think about the Karate Kid. No, I know about that already. I think okay. they're doing oh. Sandlot. How come every movie I love, they're just like, hey, let's remake it and make it awful? Why can't they just make new, cool kids' movies? Kids' movies are awful today. That's a great input. They are awful. I'm sorry. When's the last kids' movie you saw? Uh, I saw, like, <laughs> Baby Genius. <laughs> it's like four years ago. It was awful. Okay. Well, you're in... You go to children's movies all the time. What's well, no, we bought it for 99 cents on VHS. <laughs> we watched it, and then we threw it out the third floor of our dorm, and it shattered right, on the what's, ground. What's the last G-rated nice. movie that was in your DVD player? Um, <laughs> Has there ever been a G-rated movie in your DVD player? Clown on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say the last G movie? Probably, like, Toy Story or something. Oh, that's a quality flick. All right, moving on. Frenchie. All right, I'm going yeah, back. If, if you're going to control your gas. It's we'll controlled. Like, oh, all right. All right, I'm going to go back to the 1980s on this one. I'm going to recommend Howard the Duck. <laughs> that movie's on Netflix, by the way. It's a, it's a wonderful movie, and I really think you guys should go see it. Why? What's so wonderful I mean, about it? Is it it's funny? It's a movie about a traveling duck. I mean, what, else, <laughs> <laughs> what else could you possibly ask for? All right. Well, speaking of movies that are in the works of being remade, potentially, I'm going to recommend Slapshot, starring Paul Newman. And it was made in the 70s, and it is the greatest hockey movie ever. It, it's better than Mighty Ducks. It's better than Slapshot 2. I'm not even going to talk about Slapshot 3. <laughs> Slapshot 2 is okay, but no, it's, it's no Slapshot 1. The Hanson Brothers in Slapshot 2? They're in all three of them. Why? <laughs> because th that's the only way they're relevant, actually. Oh, that's true. <laughs> One of their sons does play for the Toronto Maple Leafs oh. with Phil Kessel. I don't know if they're buddies. I hope they are. Could, could you beat up Christian Hansen? Probably not. Even though he's more of a finesse he's player, not exactly. like his dad. Bordelay couldn't even beat up the Hansen brothers like Oombop Hansen brothers, let alone. <laughs> 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 oh, this Eric, is... we all know that's not true. <laughs> oh, we're all pretty sure it's true. All right, and Miller, what, what CD or album? Thanks, Frenchie. <laughs> I just, I just pointed right on Eric. Uh, one. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, what CD do you recommend, Mike? I'd go with The Resistance by Muse. What, what CD was that? The Resistance by Muse. Ah, that's a good CD. Excellent. Good. Uh, what, what, why do you recommend this CD? Who do you recommend it for? Everybody. Okay. <laughs> All right, then. I can't complain about that. Don't really have a target audience in mind on that one. All right, Eric, how about you? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Jock Jams Volume 2. Yes. I have it on cassette. And who would like Jock Jams Volume 2? Everybody. <laughs> not just Jocks? Any, anybody? Anybody would like Jock Jams I mean, Volume 2. you like it. You're not, you're not even close to a Jock. So. Oh, it's incredible. It has uh, Black Box Everybody is on it. 
Good song. <laughs> has a, uh, has some pretty horrendous music on it. It's, it's awesome. just a good pump up, pump up CD. Pump up the volume. Pump up the volume. <laughs> is that the one that has Tootsie Roll on it? Tootsie Roll is volume one. Uh, yeah, that one's good too. All right. Right. <laughs> to the left. To the left. <laughs> to the right. All right, Frenchie, what's your CD recommendation? Um, I'm gonna go with Offspring, original Prankster. That's not a CD. Yes, it <laughs> is. That's a single. No, that's it's, a single. It's with the two... name of the CD as well. I, I, how much do you want to bet me right now? He, he has never won a bet against me. Uh, he well once, but my record is f- nearly flawless. Bet me right now that that's not a CD. Okay, maybe I'm off. You but are I off. Thought the name of the CD is Americana. Wait, original no. prankster wasn't on Americana. Yeah. Oh, original prankster. That's right. That's the name of the. That's not the conspiracy way, of way, one. Way, it's way, conspiracy way, of one. Uh, are you it's sure? Conspiracy look of one. Bet me. Bet me right now. Let's look it up. Bet me. Bet me first. Bet me. John, look it up. It's conspiracy of one. Clown on her. Oh, I will clown on him. You get clowned on. No. Anyways, conspiracy of one. Let's see. Hey, look, it's the Offspring CD with original prankster on it. Oh, there we uh, go. With Red Man, that's not right. Yes, it is right. <laughs> See, original prankster is a single, and if you're recommending people get the single that has four okay. songs on it, nah. No, I didn't think you were. No, nah, then definitely conspiracy of one. All right, then give me an apology. I will not apologize. Give me an apology. I refuse. You're off the show. That's fine. You're off the show. Fine. I'm get out of my sight. Over again. Get the hell out of my sight. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yes, anyways. Uh nah, Frenchie's still here. But Aww. yeah, shut up. <laughs> I am sick of you though. Alright, so my recommendation is The Shape of Punk to Come by the Refused, which was just uh re released and remastered. And the it's a great C D, one of my favorites of all time. It it is like screaming and hardcore punk, which I'm not normally into, but the C D is worth listening to and worth falling in love with. For the first time. Screaming Punk's the best punk there is. Well put, Frenchie. Well put. So, uh, M- Mike Miller, why don't you come, come in a little closer? What, what are you going to take away from this experience of joining us on the podcast? Hmm. That this is actually really fun. Yeah. I had never done a podcast before, and I had no idea what to expect, but I greatly enjoyed it. Well, thank you. We really enjoyed having you. Thank you very much. I'm Mike. Mike. Yeah, yeah the, the studio is never going to smell the same again. Well, you guys know I'm the intern, and you love me very much, and I will be back again next week. Maybe if you start doing a good job. I thought I did a good job yeah. today. I did you're a hardly, fine job. You've hardly brought anything to the table. Well, you didn't really, we didn't talk about stuff that's my expertise. What is your expertise? NHL, baby, all the way. <laughs> Oh, well, then. It's, it's hard to play video games on an audio podcast. No, not even video games. Talking about the NHL. Like, I was very open about the whole Phil Kessel thing. That's That and has nothing to do with the NHL. That's just an NHL no, I'm player. I'm saying I know, I know a lot about NHL. Oh, really? That I can bring to the table. All right, perhaps next week we'll do an NHL trivia game, and we'll see how you do. It sounds good to me. Bring it on. I'm going to bring bet, the most bet, obscure questions I'll ever. Beat you. I bet I'll beat you. Well... No, Eric, you Eric, won't, because I'm bringing the questions. No, Eric can bring the questions. We'll we'll go you versus me. All right, it's on. We'll, we'll have an NHL like, trivia. It's on like Diddy Kong. NHL right. trivia we will have next week, then. Mike Bordelay versus John Turcotte. And Mike Bordelay will win. The intern will not win. <laughs> and I think that's it. we got to go watch the NBA Finals now. Um. Yeah. I'd rather watch... People get clowned on. <laughs> I'd rather watch my daughter get clowned on by Eric's son. I'd rather watch Eric clown on my daughter. Uh, I don't know if you want that. But, all right. It'll be old man Eric with no hair and. Oh. All right, we're going too far with this, guys. Okay. Yes. And on that note. And on that note, we'll be back next week. All right. As always, we'd like to thank our listening audience. And uh, I'd like to thank Mike Bordelais. I'd like to thank Mike Miller. I'd like to thank Eric Mitchell. And I'd love to thank myself. And uh, as always, we wish you the very best. Stop rubbing the mic stand. Does that feel awkwardly right? All right. That's... On uh, on that note, bon voyage. Au revoir. Peace.
<laughs> oh, 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 pants down. <laughs>